This video, the fourth in the Getting Started series, will cover creating a 3D model and modifying it. Topics covered include the Revolve command, the Fillet command, Marking menu, Extrude, Hole command, Patterning, and Saving your design. In the last video, we created a fully constrained and dimensioned sketch that consists of a closed profile. Now we can use that profile to create either an extrude or a revolve. In this case, we're going to use the revolve command to rotate the profile around an axis to create a spun type part. When you click on the revolve command from the create menu, you'll notice that the profile is automatically spun around the centerline axis. Press the OK button to accept the default revolve settings. We now want to round over some of the edges using the Fillet command. In the Modify menu, select Fillet. Then select the six edges highlighted in Exhibit 1. In the Fillet dialog, enter 1mm for the size of the fillets and press OK. This time, let's select the top inside edge of the recess at the top of the spool to pre-select the edge. Hold down the control key and select the bottom inside edge. See Exhibit 2. Now, right mouse click to see the marking menu. This shows you the commands that make sense for what you have pre-selected. You will notice the chamfer and the fillet command in the marking menu. Select the fillet command and enter 0.5 millimeters for the size. This is a great method for quick access to commands without having to go to the main menu. Notice in the timeline it shows the steps that we have used to create the part so far. First, it shows the sketch, then the revolve, then the fillet features we just created. Let's use the marking menu again. Pre-select the bottom face of the circular recess, then right mouse click to bring up the marking menu. Notice that it looks different this time because we pre-selected a face instead of an edge. Choose Create Sketch to place a sketch plane on that pre-selected face. In the Create menu, select Slot, then Center Point Slot, and click on the 0, zero point. Move to the right and click to define a random length. Then move up and click to define a random radius. We will define the slot with dimensions next. Click on the Dimension tool or press the D shortcut key on your keyboard and select the two points defining the length of the slot. Enter 2 millimeters for the length. Click on the two horizontal lines of the slot and enter 2.5 millimeters for the width of the slot. The line should turn black, signifying that the sketch is fully constrained. See Exhibit 3. Click on Finish Sketch. Begin by zooming in on the newly created profile and selecting inside of it. Right click to open up the marking menu where you'll find Extrude as the only applicable command. Select Extrude and then drag the blue arrow upwards to see the extrusion join or be added to the model. Dragging the arrow down, conversely, turns it red, cutting the profile through the model. Since we need the slot to cut completely through the spool, change the extent type in the dialog box from distance to all. This ensures that even if the spool's height is altered later, the slot will consistently cut through entirely. See Exhibit 4. Next, we want to add some decorative holes to the spool. Click on the front plane of the view cube so we're looking orthographically at the front of the spool. To create a 3mm diameter hole on the spool, Begin by selecting the Hole command from the Create menu. Position the cursor near the center of the bottom cylindrical face and click. 
In the whole dialog, initiate the reference selection process by clicking Select next to Reference. Choose the bottom edge of the spool and input a value of 3 millimeters, setting the hole's distance from the edge. Specify the hole diameter as 3 millimeters in the Diameter field of the dialog box. Lastly, change the Extents setting to the To option and select the inside surface of the spool and confirm with OK. Refer to Exhibit 5. To duplicate this hole around the spool, begin by accessing the Create menu and choosing Pattern, followed by Circular Pattern. Within the Circular Pattern dialog, first set the object type to Features. Then, from the timeline, select the Hole feature, which will highlight in blue upon selection. Next, locate the Axis section in the dialog. Click the Select button and choose the cylindrical face of the spool as the axis. Initially, a preview of three holes will appear. Adjust the quantity to 12 and confirm by clicking OK. To save your design, locate and click the Save icon in the top menu. When the Save dialog box opens, click New Project in the bottom left corner. Name your project Getting Started Series and press Enter. Choose the Getting Started Series from the project list. We've now established a new project which serves as a container for all related items. Think of it like a file cabinet drawer. You can store folders, files, drawings, pictures, and more within it. Finally, name your file Spool at the top and click Save. See Exhibit 6. In the next video, we will cover editing the timeline.